Hello my soccer universe! Finally somewhat fit again, so let's do this video on all of the quarterfinals. I expect this to be a longer one. First a few things on wardrobe choice. I decided to go for France. I mean honestly I should have been Morocco but with only one Morocco shirt. Um, I wanted to keep the matchup uh, Morocco-Portugal up there, so uh, that's one thing. Then uh, it was more or less, who do I go with? Is it Argentina or France? And as I will elaborate, I honestly, while I still wouldn't mind Argentina winning, but the way they behaved, it was not very sympathetic, to be honest. So I was almost left with the default choice. France out there, also for Croatia, only two jerseys, and you know, I will, this would have been the other um, good choice. But I decided eventually to go for France because there I, I'm a little bit more spoiled for choice. But yeah, quarterfinals, quarterf uh, sem quarterfinals, yes. Uh, what a crazy set of matches! Well, I think I'm happy that I watched every single one of them despite now not feeling well yes i because i did not i really had to recover yesterday a little, little bit more i slept through a good portion between morocco and portugal um but you know i made up for it later uh but you know uh, they were really really interesting from every aspect that you could imagine the first one just the sheer determination of croatia uh, of forcing what's good for them onto brazil the grit the brilliant Neymar goal and Croatia go through uh, an upset that rippled through the entire soccer world because uh, not many saw that coming and I even talked to uh, some Croatia fans before that game uh, and they said no we have no chance against Brazil. Then the way that Argentina against uh, got themselves into trouble into a game that was completely safe and the, and the way that Argentina completely lost it not only playing wise but also um, on the field and I think this was a complete refereeing disaster that game we'll talk about that, that, that as well where a Netherlands team that was at one point looking at a 3 to 4 nil exit clawed themselves back only to lose it also because we reverted back to what did not work before that's another story this game is probably right one with, with the biggest storylines in there um and uh, let's say no one acquitted themselves really really great in there morocco uh with so many injured i mean the defense i think they had uh three or two out of three uh Quite a few defenders were missing, others were playing with injections and, and so on. They still hold on, they out-muscle uh, out Portugal, I want to say, it. technically super disciplined. But the story, yes, we could all make it about Cristiano, I'm not going to make it about Cristiano in this, in, in this video. For me, the story is that Fernando Santos did not change enough. Portugal tried the same over and over and over again. And Morocco actually was quite happy with that. At the one time it could have uh, worked, Pepe misses. And then England against France uh, was also, in a way, a weird one because I, it was a game definitely. It was it was definitely a heavyweight uh, battle. I almost want to say I thought Croatia probably was probably the best game, but I, in in France you you could see the high intensity. To me, at this point that the game was played, these are the two best teams left in the competition, which is a shame. Um, and England battled hard, neutralized most of the threat for France. However, France have a way to get through. I mean, uh, the individual class in that team. England did everything. England is well played excellently. This was. One of the best England performances I've seen as of late against a big team. However, it's again penalty drama. And in the way we can say that, except for the Morocco game, it was all a tale of penalties. We have two penalty shootouts. We had the penalty drama surrounding Harry Kane. And what actually made me very uh, the happiest is that the winner score for France was Olivier Giroud, a Milan player. Yes, another Milan player. 
potentially could have been Sasa as a send off, but the key could have hurt Frost big time. So yeah, Frost, I, I almost uh, hesitant to say it, but at this moment, my sympathies in a way lie with Frost because the Milan angle, but also because I see that they, they are the best uh, team. When I look at the four four teams, uh, I mean, Croatia, welcome to the big boys. Um, I just see they're, they're overstretching themselves in, 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 in a way. That they have reached another semifinal is a great achievement. I love their midfield. But and I think their coach is doing an outstanding job the way he approaches every game. I don't see the material to win this World Cup. Argentina is too emotional, too shaky and relying, and we thought this is over, relying too much on Messi. In addition, uh, behaving themselves like thugs. Gotta be said as well. Morocco also limping and while I really admire for what they're doing, I'm not faulting them for doing that. Um, I have to say that um, their defensive approach, while not uninteresting, but I want a team to win the World Cup that is complete on the back and on the front. And for me, that is Frost. Also, history behind it, yes. And then, you know, personal, uh, we have two million players that could win it. So um, I think my allegiance is switched to France. And to top it off, they have the best shirt of all the teams left in the competition. I don't think we need to argue about that. Okay, let's talk Croatia Brazil. Uh, I mean, you probably have heard many things about this now. Uh, for me, the outstanding feature of this game was that Croatia could force Brazil to have the game played at a slow pace. That was the only way that Croatia could dominate in midfield. It was also, yes, he had his glorious moment, but it was also that Neymar did not show up most of the time for this game. When he showed up, he was standing on the ball. The way that Brazil could have shredded Croatia is if they are playing at a fast pace. Why was the Richarlison goal against South Korea so great? Yes, there was the head juggle in there, but why it was so great? It was patch, 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 and you go in. It was a fast paced play. But Croatia lulled Brazil into some security, especially in the first half. And then uh, that they never could uh, get the wings under control. What uh, Croatia was doing there was outstanding. And especially in the first half, I really felt that Croatia were the more complete, the better team overall. Yes, in the second half, Brazil meant business. And Brazil came out, Brazil had chances. And there were some great saves from Livakovic in there. Um, and so in that sense, you want to make a uh, point to expected goals and say that, yeah, uh, Brazil had so, 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 so many, so many chances and uh, Croatia virtually had none. And in the second half, they had none. In the first half, they barely had a shot on goal, but neither did Brazil. Let's be frank. So that to me was outstanding. The other one is, um, I did not understand why Winnie Jr. did come, come off. If it was an injury, okay, but I did not understand that substitution. I also did not understand why uh, the uh, substitutions by Chiche were really, really weird. Uh, because I really felt that they need someone in midfield to take over. But the players he brought on uh, with Anthony for Rafinha, does, it is a one-to-one. -one. Rodrigo for Vinny Jr. is also a one-to-one, -one, but it's actually a step down. Uh, Pedro for Richarlison, what, what, what are you doing? Uh, why is there not a, a Bruno Guimaraes, for instance, coming on? You know, stuff like that. Change a little bit. Change a little bit. Because, um, yes, you were pressing and you were putting this Croatia uh, team very much on the back foot. But you didn't find the breakthrough. And, yes, he made the goal after. But it got to be said that I think Neymar should have come off. I really think so. Because he didn't contribute anything to the attack. But I would be remiss to, yes, these are things that have to have to say, but I, I was so in awe how well Croatia played. And again, 
It's not only the stars, your uh, Modric, Brozovic, Kovacic and, 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 and so on. There are also so many young players in, in there. And uh, I really was... Uh, he brought on players from Dinamo Zagreb. Petkovic, who at one point, I mean, I have to say that, uh, another unlikely hero, because every attack that went through Petkovic stopped at Petkovic. Up until it didn't. He put on Lovre Maya. I mean, put him here. Was for a short time at last game. I mean, it's absolute crazy stuff that happened. I was really amazed by, by, by Croatia. Um, yes, over time, I really thought when Neymar scored that brilliant goal, that double one two, uh, he created himself. He went through, and that probably was, was the communication while he was still on the field. This was a brilliant individual effort where the team played. This was the one Brazilian move on the night. But then keep it tight. Why are you getting caught out in a counter-attack? This is what I do not get. Uh, this was so mismanaged from left to right. And then uh, or, or change plays to Petkovic. These are two Dinamos. Dinamo Zagreb is a good team. But it's not a top team in Europe. These are two Dinamo Zagreb players who combined and then the shot is even, even deflected by Marquinhos. And there, there you go. Then we have to also talk about the penalties. Yes, Croatia have an excellent record in penalties, but they didn't have as many so far. Why is Neymar not starting the penalty shootout? Why is Rodrigo starting the penalty shootout? And why does Neymar stay in fifth spot? Over and over again, yes, we will talk, Van Dijk also missed, but over and over again, it is. The strongest penalty takers have to go first. Or at least have a strong penalty take a go first because you want to get on the score sheet. You don't want to start out with someone that, 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 that is shaky. Why is Marquinhos taking that fourth penalty? This is the this is when Neymar has to step up to kind of put a little bit of pressure back onto Croatia. Croatia's penalty, I mean, Osic's one was one where I thought, man, this boy has guts. I mean, that was a gutsy penalty if there ever was one. The first two went down, down the middle, Modric, I thought might be shaky, but no. It was really, really impressive and bravo Croatia. Uh, as I said already earlier, this to me solidifies Croatia among the big boys. Absolutely a small country being twice in a row in the semifinals, bringing out talent over and over again. This is, this is arguably already the third generation of Croatia that actually uh, you feel can do something by far the most successful one. Uh, it's an absolutely amazing success story, sorry. And uh, I think there's an arc argument. Uruguay will probably claim, but at this moment, uh, given population size, Croatia are the best nation in the world. For what they can do, absolutely impressive. So that was actually a really good game. I have to say the Netherlands-Argentina game was not. Despite all, all the drama, this was not a good game. Uh, this was the Netherlands first uh, having suddenly more possession because our, our Argentina let them, couldn't do much with it. And then one brilliant pass from Messi into Molina. And that pass is one to frame. This was Messi's brilliance. This is why we love this player. Because he didn't see that pass. But he saw that Molina was running. He made a few steps and then played it through four players through. And yes, the Netherlands tried to neutralize Messi as good as they could. I think they achieved that. The problem is, going forward, they were rather, rather poor. And that goal for Argentina, you would have hoped opened the Netherlands up, but it didn't really work. Because at halftime, Fajal changes. He brought on Berkhaus, he brought on Kopmeyer, he brought on De Jong. Uh, a little bit later, but it took a whole lot of time until the Dutch got going. They needed desperation time. Argentina controlled that game left and right. The Netherlands couldn't do anything with it. Uh, and then a penalty is given and Messi scores. But at this point, and uh, probably later, I already have to say that I found the refereeing choice rather odd. Uh, having, yes, it's a Spanish referee, European ref referee uh, against the South American team. That, that was all, but also a Spanish referee that speaks Spanish. And you could see Messi at halftime already talking to Laos. 
and telling you, you know, there are certain things you didn't do all right. The refereeing by Laos was some of the most partisan that I've seen through the entire World Cup. And going into this game, those were the two teams that I wanted to win this World Cup. They played against Gazer. So it's really, really hard tough to see that. I probably at the beginning was leaning a little bit more R to R, but the refereeing was so off and so ridiculous. And it got an even better when, uh, I mean, Argentina is two goals up. They can, okay, Acuna is already missing uh, the next next game. Let's bring uh, Dalia Fico, Pizzella, you know, bring on Paredes, take off all the players that are in, are injured. Let, let, let's play safe. Paredes should have freaking walked. Paredes was, uh, that this guy stayed on the pitch is unbelievable. However, let's, let's do that. The other big moment is that the 78th Wayhorse came on. And now the Dutch, the home country of total football, of beautiful attacking uh, football, play a 4-4-2 with two big men up front, finding the crosses. This was about as anti-Dutch as it can be. At this moment, I thought this Dutch team reminds me of Germany of old. It is, was so weird. It was so so weird what Louis van Gaal was, was doing. However, it was in a way also brilliant because without Depay, who was probably the one flare player that have off Wickers on, Archie Archie could not deal with that anymore. And first cross, the first chance really in, in the game, a Berghuis cross and Wickers puts it in. And then Argentina still had largely control of that game. However, Paredes should have walked. Uh, there was a foul and then he yanks the ball into the benches of the Netherlands. That is a red card offense for, for, for me right, right there. Van Dijk probably also should have been booked for his shove of Paredes. Uh, there's no doubt about it. He didn't do anything. Messi makes a handball. A deliberate handball and Laos lets it go. He doesn't even give him a, a yellow card. And then uh, late, later on, Messi gets a second, so Messi could have walked as well. It is so ridiculous. It is absolutely so ridiculous, the refereeing that was happening there. It is not that, uh, there were, uh, that the penalty was, was a penalty, penalty and that uh, the goal slot, that was maybe all right. But he lost the control all of the game and the way he handed out yellow, yellow, yellow cards, uh, it was so partisan, I cannot believe that. And that made me actually then go straight in the Dutch Dutch corner. I was so happy with this brilliant free kick. Cope minus into Wakehorst. It was a 2-2. And then we had overtime. And then the Dutch disappointed me again. Because they said, okay, we're not going to play anymore. We played. We had Argentina back. We had all the momentum. I really thought at this point that uh, the Netherlands are going to take it to Argentina. No, it was then the exact opposite. The Netherlands hung back again let Argentina come at them and just before the end of the uh, overtime Enzo Fernandez hits the post there were quite a few chances where Argentina could have won it and they go with the momentum into the penalty shootout and then yeah Van Dijk misses the first one Messi like the like the first penalty uh, that they took in the, in the game just waiting until the goalkeeper moves and then nonchalantly pull, putting it in uh, Berghuis misses the second one Emi Martinez the big hero but we got a, five, a full pan penalty shooter, which, which is what well, well, the, the Dutch then are um, without uh, trouble. Uh, Enzo Fernandez had the chance to put Argentina through, uh, put Pulsivar de Jong, then equalizer in Lautaro Martinez, who had a very shaky World Cup, puts it in. Maybe this will improve his confidence as well. And then, yeah, the Argentinians did not behave themselves very well. And Dumfries, in the end, uh, trying to defend his teammates, is sent, is, is sent off. Uh, leaves a bitter taste. But for the, for the tournament, yes, Argentina in the semifinals. But I clearly have to say, the way Argentina are playing, they had a comfortable lead again against the opponent where it could have been easily, if they uh, continue playing, it could have been easily 3-0. They concede a goal and they throw themselves away. And that is, I don't see them winning this, this World World Cup. Although I have to say, when Brazil got eliminated, my first thought is this how Messi wins the World Cup. The video is already getting long, but uh, we have two more, uh, more quarterfinals to cover. 
Morocco against Portugal. Um, amazing atmosphere. And that is also Argentina, also amazing atmosphere. Ah, the last postscript is, of course, that uh, a prominent US journalist that I remember reading his stuff died in the stands, which is just a tragedy beyond imagination. But amazing atmosphere also at Morocco against Por Portugal, uh, where again, um, Morocco lulled Portugal by standing very compact, defensively super sound, but when they launched attacks, really dangerous. Amrabat, despite playing on injections, wiping off every, every, everything. Yes, Portugal had a little bit more chances. Especially Joao Felix was probably the best uh, player for poor Portugal on the field. Um, the one thing is that they tried the same thing over and over and over again. Now, uh, credit where credit is due. Uh, he brought on Ronaldo, but at that moment I thought that might be the worst thing. Because at this moment, what Portugal needed is to hit Morocco. Once Morocco launches once the country, to hit them at that point at full speed. Who do you have that can hit them with full speed? Rafael Leao, who came on, in my opinion, way too late. Because whenever he was there, and he needs usual, usual, usual few runs, it was super dangerous for um, Morocco. That was the change that came way, way, way too late. It also, if you have a goalkeeper who misjudges the flight of a cross, Fry uh, at uh, Allah to Eneziri. And yes, Eneziri is jumping high as Ronaldo. I mean, it was a very impressive jump, but it's in the end a goalkeeping mistake. What can you do? Um, I was impressed, like with Croatia, uh, how Morocco dug in. We saw this already against Spain, but then also countered and probably could have made it two, if not three nil. They play had some counter, especially Chatri, who who later got sent set off for two yellow cards in short, short succession. If he puts his touches a little bit better, especially the one where he wants to go through the defender instead of playing it outside, maybe they, it would have been offside. It's two nil, or then he runs alone on on, on the goal. He, he he could have killed the game right there and then. And for all the possession that Portugal had, the same but every corner is uh, they uh, is played short. They tried to play it pretty. They they're not whipping in the crosses or, or, or whatever. Try something different. Yes, there was a really good chance by Bruno Fernandes. There was a really good shot by um, Joao Felice that was brilliantly saved by Bonu. Uh, there was, of course, the Ronaldo chance. And there was, of course, then with the last uh, head of the game, the big Pepe header that usually goes in point-blank range. If that Pepe Heda Galco goes in, Portugal is going to win this match. I'm absolutely certain about it. But lifted by their amazing, crazy support, Morocco hung in. It was one of those games uh, where you needed to hang on to this. You needed to win it in 90. You had it. If, they, if Portugal finds an equalizer, Morocco, I think, are more, most likely going, going out. Because they were they're losing their captain. Uh, Saiz uh, during, during the game. I mean, uh, whatever Zia came, came off, and Naziri came off. I mean, all the players that have, uh, that are big can come off. It's a tremendous coaching job. It was the ninth game under the coach, uh, in, including one um, one um, uh, unofficial uh, game. They've conceded only one goal, and there was an own goal. This is Italy 2006 stuff. The only thing. Going abroad, yes, they make their goals here, 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 here there, but but I think they're missing a little bit the uh, uh, the um, the punch up front to make them a true world class team. But the way they're managed, this is just beyond anything else. Now again, Ronaldo very much not with the team. Yes, he had the big chance. Yes, uh, Pepe immediately gave him armband as soon as he came on. Um, and probably you needed someone of his goal scoring prowess to probably throw on. Although I really felt uh, it was it was a little bit the wrong move right there. You just cannot go off by, 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 by yourself and then cry and whatever. Uh, yes, this was the last time probably saw Ronaldo the World Rock Cup. A great career goes to the end. He matches the record of the most internationals for a country. Uh, 
So all great things. Huge respect for Ronaldo. I just think that this year is just going so wrong for him that I honestly, uh, it goes back to being self-absorbed Ronaldo. That's all I want to say about that. But yeah, Portugal are out. And that was a team that I really thought could, like Brazil, really showed that they are absolutely excellent and it was not meant to be. And then another team, but it was clear that in the last semifinal, another team will go out that was really, really excellent. And it was either England or France. Now, I think England in a way lost it in the first half because they had too much respect from Mbappe. And that open spaces for Dembele, and I think they forgot about Griezmann. And the way that the first goal happened is, yes, it was a foul. There was a foul uh, um, in the in the build-up on Saka. Yes, the refereeing for Brazilian, this was very English refereeing, was a little bit old and letting it go way too much. Uh, there was a penalty shout. Uh, it was not a penalty, but it should have definitely been a free kick. So uh, the English can be a little bit aggrieved with the refereeing there. However, after this foul, the way that the game is built up, they have Mbappé cornered. He gets free. He runs. The defenders follow him. Then they go all in the box, thinking about Mbappé and Dembélé and so on. And they completely forget about Chouameni. This was, in Austrian TV, they call it uh, not rest defense, rest verteidigo, but respect defense. Because they had so much respect of uh, the danger of Mbappé that they gave the space to Chouameni, who could pick his spot with a brilliant shot out of his standing, more, more or less. It was assisted by Griezmann. And Griezmann is very much underappreciated for this Frost team because uh, everyone talks about your... Um, uh, your Mbappé especially, but also all the other players. Griezmann is actually playing not the flashy role that they played previously in France two tournaments, but a really hard working managing role. Absolutely amazing what he's doing there. Um, I thought Dembele at first was really brilliant, brilliant but the more it goes, the more he frustrated frust 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 me. But the longer the game went on, the better England got the game under control and they actually dominated in the midfield, especially to Declan Rice. Uh, Bellingham, I thought, was a little bit anonymous in there, but Bukayo Saka, uh, great, 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 great performance. Absolutely great performance in there. It was a heavyweight fight. It was a little bit of a stalemate in the first half where the one breakthrough was this Germany goal. Although it was rather, rather even. In the second half, England came out storming, had really some good, really good chances. Uh, where they could, they could maybe should have uh, got, uh, gotten an equalizer already. Then it's a penalty. Clear penalty by Germany. Uh, we don't have to talk about that. Uh, and then uh, Kane converts against his teammate uh, from Spurs. I actually thought, I mean, uh, the two captains were the uh, captain and the vice captain of Spurs. Very, very in, in, interesting. And then right off the kick of Rabio, Kul could have made it, um, a Kul could have given France the lead. But then England did take over. And it was a very, very encouraging performance for England. Yes, they went out in the end. Because it was decided on fine, this was a game decided on fine, fine margins. And I think England, if they want to go further in the tournament, they will have to ne win a game like this eventually. Um, but either they were off, I mean, the Maguire header needs to go on target. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry to say, the Rashford free kick laid on needs this to go in, but uh, especially the, the Kane penalty needs to go in. You need to take your chances. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I really thought that England played exceptionally well there. Um, but then there was one chance by Giroud that was a good save by Pick Pickford and then from the corner kick uh, ball goes a little bit around Griezmann whips in and Giroud has had had it's in it it goes also via Maguire's head that's why uh, Pickford cannot get to it because I think if this was not more perfect it would have gone straight at Pickford um, so happy for Giroud I think both Kane and Giroud scored the 53rd goal um, 
But England almost immediately got a penalty. They took a long time for VAR, and I don't know what Theo was doing there. Theo. Mason Mount is not doing... Mason Mount would not have done much with that chance, because I think Juris would have gotten that one. You don't need to body check him. Clear penalty, uh, potentially even a red card. That's the question. Um, and Kane steps up and puts it over the bar. Boy. Boy. That must have hurt. England still having chances and as I said, the Rashford free, free kick, I really, uh, a really good free kick. Bukayo Sako had to come off for Raheem Sterling. Um, that is one. I think that Saka probably was getting tired, a little bit injured. I think what the what I hear also for English media, they're not very happy that the referee let it go so much, which I thought, thought was funny. England had a little bit more of the game, but France won it with their class. That's how much I can say, and with a teeny bit of luck, because Kane doesn't sky a penalty normally. But yeah, I have to say, uh, going forward, if England can replicate it and maybe get a little bit more solid in defense, um, this is a team that can win a tournament. With the class that they have meanwhile up front, this is a team that can win a tournament. Uh, I'm absolutely certain about that. Um, and I think it will happen. It probably even should happen that uh, the Spectres of 66 are finally banished. Um, I think I said about every team. Let's quickly say goodbye to Brazil. Huge disappointment. Um, you didn't turn it on when you needed, you needed it. You got, got, got yourself lulled in. For the Netherlands... Um, I would say on par, I think overall a positive performance, you fought back. The one thing that you have to look yourself in the mirror, why did you go defensive again? Um, so yeah, I would like to see a little bit more spark from the Netherlands. Portugal, similar to England, I think this is a young generation, there, we, there is a lot in there. And I think without Cristiano, I think this is a team that can really accelerate they have supreme talent up, up there but it's a big disappointment because i think this was a, t a tournament that they probably think about themselves that they probably could could have won and for england uh almost a similar resume as i can say for portugal um however i don't think it, it was not necessarily the coaching that was uh wrong there it was really just that they uh failed uh, to convert the chances. Let's put it that way. That's where England failed because their game plan was really, really well, maybe a little bit too respective on Mbappé. So yeah, going forward, uh, we have now two semifinals with two big fav 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 favorites, but I think this is, is only because of ratings that have not changed much. Um, and yes, it looks like a France-Argentina final, which for Qatar... You know, we have three of the four big PSG stars are still in the, in the tournament and only Neymar left. Uh, for Qatar, having Mbappé against Messi, yeah, those play for our team would be nice. However, up until recently, we would have said the two big teams will meet in the final. But then 2018, where I think everything everyone talked about the France-England final and then it was Croatia in there. I don't trust this Argentina squad, although they might go through, and I think that Morocco could give a, a France a hard time, but I can see France winning the Morocco game easier than I see uh, Argentina beating Croatia. It will be interesting, as I said, favorite, the favorites are very, very clear in France and our Argentina, and you see it also overall, France are now the top favorites. Um, a little bit because they are a little bit also more favorite, favorite, favorite um, overall um, uh, over Morocco. But yeah, games gotta, gotta, gotta be played. We have the first one on Tuesday played at the Lucille Stadium and then Alcor for the France. Very long video. I hope you did enjoy it. Please let me know what you thought about the, um, those games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.